Brilliant Light Power, Inc. BLP, formerly Blacklight Power, Inc. of Cranberry, New Jersey, is a company founded by Randell L. Mills, who claims to have discovered a new energy source. The purported energy source is based on Mills' assertion that the electron in a hydrogen atom can drop below the lowest energy state known as the ground state. Mills calls these hypothetical hydrogen atoms that are in an energy state below ground level, hydrinos. Mills self published a closely related book, The Grand Unified Theory of Classical Physics, and has co authored articles on claimed hydrino related phenomena. Critics say it lacks corroborating scientific evidence, and is a relic of cold fusion. Critical analysis of the claims have been published in the peer-reviewed journals Physics Letters A, New Journal of Physics, Journal of Applied Physics, and Journal of Physics D, Applied Physics on the basis that quantum mechanics is valid, and that the proposed hydrino states are unphysical and incompatible with key equations of quantum mechanics. In 2009, IEEE Spectrum magazine characterized it as a loser technology because most experts don't believe such lower states exist, and they say the experiments don't present convincing evidence, and mentioned that Wolfgang Ketterle had said the claims are nonsense. BLP has announced several times that it was about to deliver commercial products based on Mill's theories but has not delivered a working product. Topic. Company The company, originally called Hydrocatalysis Inc. was founded in 1991 by Randell Mills who claimed to have discovered a power source that represents a boundless form of new primary energy and that will replace all forms of fuel in the world. On April 25, 1991 at a press conference in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Mills first announced his hydrino state hypothesis which rejects the idea that cold fusion was occurring in studies surrounding the Fleischmann-Pons experiment. According to Mills, no fusion was actually happening in the cells, and all the effects would be caused by shrinkage of hydrogen atoms as they fell to a state below the ground state. Experimental evidence offered by Mills was in contradiction to known chemistry and was dismissed by the scientific community. By December 1999, BLP raised more than $25 million from about 150 investors. By January 2006, BLP funding exceeded $60 million. Among the investors are Pacificorp, Connective, retired executives from Morgan Stanley, and several BLP board members like Shelby Brewer, who was the top nuclear official for the Reagan administration and chief executive officer of AB Combustion Engineering Nuclear Power, and former board member Michael H. Jordan, 1936 to 2010, who was chief executive officer of PepsiCo. World Worldwide Foods, Westinghouse Electric Corporation, CBS Corporation, and Electronic Data Systems. In 2008, Mills said that his cell stacks could provide power for long range electric vehicles, and that this electricity would cost less than two cents per kilowatt hour. In December 2013, BLP was one of 54 applicants to receive tilde $1.1 million in grant funding from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Topic. Collaborators with the company In 1996, NASA released a report describing experiments using a BLP electrolytic cell. Although not recreating the large heat gains reported for the cell by BLP, unexplained power gains ranging from 1.06 to 1.68 of the input power were reported, which, whilst Admit ink the existence of an unusual source of heat with the cell falls far short of being compelling. The authors went on to propose the recombination of hydrogen and oxygen as a possible explanation of the anomalous results. Around 2002, the NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts (NIAC) granted a Phase I grant to Anthony Marchese, a mechanical engineer at Rowan University, to study a possible rocket propulsion that would use hydrinos. In 2002, Rowan University's Anthony Marchese said that whilst 
agnostic about the existence of hydrinos. He was quite confident that there was no fraud involved with BLP. Although his NIAC grant was criticized by Bob Park, Marchese said, for me to not continue with this study would be unethical to the scientific community. The only reason not to pursue this would be because of being afraid of being bullied. Topic. Criticism In 1999, the Nobel Prize-winning physicist Philip Warren Anderson said he is sure that it's a fraud. And in the same year another Nobel Prize-winning physicist, Stephen Chu, called it extremely unlikely. The following year, a 2000 patent based on its hydrino-related technology was later withdrawn by the United States Patent and Trademark Office USPTO due to contradictions with known physics laws and other concerns about the viability of the described processes, citing Park and others. A hydrino laser patent has not been withdrawn by the USPTO, US 7773656. An April 2000 editorial column by Robert L. Park and an outside query by an unknown person prompted group director Esther Keppelinger of the USPTO to review this new patent herself. Keppelinger said that her main concern was the proposition that the applicant was claiming the electron going to a lower orbital in a fashion that I knew was contrary to the known laws of physics and chemistry and that the patent appeared to involve cold fusion and perpetual motion. Keppelinger contacted another director, Robert Sparr, who also expressed doubts on the patentability of the patent application. This caused the USPTO to withdraw from issue the patent application before it was granted and reopen it for review, and to withdraw four related applications, including one for a hydrino power plant. In 2000, a law firm engaged by BLP sent letters to four prominent physicists asking them to stop making what it called defamatory comments. The physicists had been quoted in The Village Voice, Dow Jones Newswire and other publications as dismissing BLP's claims on the basis that they violated the laws of physics. In response, one of the physicists, Robert L. Park of the American Physical Society, said that if BLP sued, he was confident the scientific community would lend its support and that the court would side with the physicists. Park later wrote that a number of the recipients of the letter, who had responded honestly to questions from the media, had since fallen silent. Scientists, Park wrote, are easy to intimidate since they are not rich enough to risk costly legal actions. In May 2000, BLP filed suit in the U.S. District Court of Columbia, saying that withdrawal of the application after the company had paid the fee was contrary to law. In 2002, the district court concluded that the USPTO was acting inside the limits of its authority in withdrawing a patent over whose validity it had doubts, and later that year, the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit ratified this decision. Applications were rejected by the UK Patent Office for similar reasons. The European Patent Office EPO rejected a similar BLP patent application due to lack of clarity on how the process worked. Re-examination of this European patent is pending. Robert L. Park, Emeritus Professor of Physics at the University of Maryland and a notable skeptic, has been particularly critical of BLP since 1991. By 2000, Park remained skeptical, stating, Unlike most schemes for free energy, the hydrino process of Randy Mills is not without ample theory. Mills has written a 1,000-page tome, entitled The Grand Unified Theory of Classical Quantum Mechanics, that takes the reader all the way from hydrinos to antigravity. Fortunately, Aaron Barth has taken upon himself to look through it, checking for accuracy. Barth is a postdoctoral researcher at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and holds a PhD in astronomy, 1998, from UC Berkeley. What he found initially were mathematical blunders and unjustified assumptions. To his surprise, however, portions of the book seemed well organized. 
These, it now turns out, were lifted verbatim from various texts. This has been the object of a great deal of discussion from Mill's Hydrino study group. Mill seems not to understand what the fuss is all about. Park By 2008, Park continued to express his skepticism. Blacklight Power BLP, founded 17 years ago as Hydrocatalysis, announced last week that the company had successfully tested a prototype power system that would generate 50 kilowatts of thermal power. BLP anticipates delivery of the new power system in 12 to 18 months. The BLP process, discovered by Randy Mills, is said to coax hydrogen atoms into a state below the ground state, called the hydrino. Quote, there is no independent scientific confirmation of the hydrino, and BLP has a patent problem. So they have nothing to sell but bullshit. The company is therefore dependent on investors with deep pockets and shallow brains. Park in 2008, Robert L. Park wrote that BLP has benefited from wealthy investors who allocate a proportion of their funds to risky ventures with a potentially huge upside, but that in the case of BLP since the science underlying the offering was just wrong. Investment risk was, in Park's view, infinite. Various scientists also voiced their opinions as far back as the 1990s. Stephen Chu, Nobel laureate in physics in 1997, said, It's extremely unlikely that this is real, and I feel sorry for the funders, the people who are backing this. In 1999, Princeton University's physics Nobel laureate Philip Anderson said of it, If you could fuck around with the hydrogen atom, you could fuck around with the energy process in the sun. You could fuck around with life itself. Everything we know about everything would be a bunch of nonsense. That's why I'm so sure that it's a fraud. Wolfgang Ketterle, a professor of physics at MIT, said BLP's claims are nonsense and that there is no state of hydrogen lower than the ground state. Michio Kaku, a theoretical physicist based at City University of New York, adds that the only law that this business with Mills is proving is that a fool and his money are easily parted. And that. There's a sucker born every minute. While Peter Zimmerman was chief arms control scientist at the State Department, he stated that his department and the patent office. Have fought back with success. Against. Pseudoscientists. And he railed against, among other things, the inventors of. Hydrinos. In 2009, the editors of IEEE Spectrum magazine characterized it as a loser technology because M. Ost experts don't believe such lower states exist, and they say the experiments don't present convincing evidence, and mentioned that Wolfgang Ketterle had said the claims are nonsense. BLP has announced several times that it was about to deliver commercial products based on Mill's theories but has not delivered a working product. Topic Peer-reviewed criticisms In the 2000s, several reviewed articles were published criticizing hydrino theory for being incompatible with quantum mechanics. For example, in 2005, Andreas Rathke of the European Space Agency, publishing in the New Journal of Physics, wrote that Mill's description of quantum mechanics is inconsistent and has several serious deficiencies, and that there is no theoretical support of the hydrino hypothesis. Rathke said it would be helpful if Mill's experimental results could be independently replicated, and suggested that any evidence produced should be reconsidered in the context of a conventional physical explanation. One inconsistency of Mill's CQM with quantum mechanics regards its inability to be reconciled with the probability density function in quantum mechanics. Rathke stated, however, while solutions of the Schrödinger equation with N in the same year, the Journal of Applied Physics published a critique by A. V. Phelps of the 2004 article, Water Bath Calorimetric Study of Excess Heat Generation in Resonant Transfer Plasmas by J. Phillips, R. Mills and X. Chen. 
Phelps criticized both the calorimetric techniques and the underlying theory described in the Phillips, Mills, Chen article. The journal also published a response to Phelps' critique on the same day. In 2005 Sisovic and others published a paper describing experimental data and analysis of Mills' claim that a resonant transfer model RTM explains the excessive Doppler broadening of the H-alpha line. Sisovic concluded that the detected large excessive broadening in pure hydrogen and in NaH2 mixture is in agreement with CM collision model and other experimental results and that these results can't be explained by RTM. The collision model explanation for excessive broadening of the H alpha line is based on established physics. In 2006, a paper published in Physics Letters A concluded that Mill's theoretical hydrino states are unphysical. For the hydrino states, the binding strength increases as the strength of the electric potential decreases, with maximum binding strength when the potential has disappeared completely. The author Norman Dombey remarked, we could call these anomalous states homeopathic states because the smaller the coupling, the larger the effect. The model also assumes that the nuclear charge distribution is a point rather than having an arbitrarily small non-zero radius. It also lacks an analogous solution in the Schrödinger equation, which governs non-relativistic systems. Dombey concluded, we suggest that outside of science fiction this is sufficient reason to disregard them. From a suggestion in Dombey's paper, further work by Antonio de Castro has shown that states below the ground state, as described in Mill's work, are incompatible with the Schrödinger, Klein-Gordon and Dirac equations, key equations in the study of quantum systems. In 2008, the Journal of Physics D, Applied Physics published an article by Hans Joachim Kuhns, Professor Emeritus at the Institute for Experimental Physics, Ruhr University Bochum, critical of the 2003 paper authored by R. Mills and P. Ray, Extreme Ultraviolet Spectroscopy of Helium Hydrogen. The abstract of the article is, it is suggested that spectral lines, on which the fiction of fractional principal quantum numbers in the hydrogen atom is based, are nothing else but artifacts. Kuhn stated that it was impossible to detect the novel lines below 30 nanometers reported by Mills and Ray because the equipment they used did not have the capability to detect them as per the manufacturer and as per every book on vacuum UV spectroscopy, and therefore the observed lines must be artifacts. Quote dot. Kuhn's also stated that the enormous spectral widths of the novel lines point to artifacts, too. Topic. See also List of topics characterized as pseudoscience